Welcome to John's workshop and in this episode we're going to replace a few parts in the carburetors and make a few adjustments having already gotten the automatic choke working properly in a previous episode. We have already pulled the carburetor and choke assembly out of the car and that is where we begin in this episode. This is the fuel bowl and under here is the diaphragm that allows you to move the main jet up and down and we're going to replace those uh, rubber diaphragms one on either side on this side you can see i've already taken it off you can see the main needle uh, sticking out right here and then over here you can see this is the assembly uh, the diaphragm is under here and that's the part that we're going to replace today so there's a little bit of a trick to getting these springs out um, so there's a spring in here that provides the, the tension, see, so you can push this, uh, basically it keeps the, this against the uh, set screw, which I've removed in here, to adjust the mixture. So to get that out, it's a little bit tricky, um, but it, what I found seemed to work is to, to sort of squeeze that spring in to the point that it pops out like that underneath, and then see how this can just be removed like this. Oh, I just separated uh, the pivoting portion here that moves the jet up and down from the bowl. And you can see there's this rubber hose right here. And that is how, I guess, the fuel is connected into the bottom of the jet here. So this is the, the old diaphragm. You can still see it has the spring here and this rubber hose. It's a real kind of squishy rubber that was down in here. But on the new diaphragm, this is what that looks like. And on the bottom, this is just a straight pipe out, whereas here on the old piece, you can see it was curved to fit into this. But in the new one, they give you this piece right here, which essentially does the same thing. It fits under here, uh, and then that passes over into the fuel bowl. Okay, so that plastic piece with the tube on it goes into base here, uh, and then you can see in here, uh, it's just barely there, that it extends out into the, uh, the light, right? extends out into the base of the bowl here. Uh, so that's the fuel feed over here. Uh, and then the spring is gonna go here like this. The thing I noticed is with the new diaphragm here um, and the new main jet is that that's a much tighter fit uh, as that goes down, right? So the, the older main jet here was definitely worn uh, compared to the new one here. It was much tighter. And we know it's running rich, so uh, this new uh, main jet and diaphragm uh, is going to really lean us out, I'm sure. And one important thing that we found sort of by mistake is you need to reuse this old spring here. Even though with the new parts that you get, there's uh, this which replaces the black hose that we took off in this spring here. But this little spring here is not really enough to keep this main jet pushed up against these fingers here. So that's one thing we did as a mistake. So don't make that same mistake that we did. Um, and so what you do when, when you reassemble this is it kind of goes back together like this and that snaps in there like that. Um, and then that way when you're adjusting the mixture, you can see that that spring is really what's driving this main jet back up into the into the carburetor and then on the bottom side here this spring really is just keeping the this white plastic piece here uh, at the bottom of the bowl so uh, that's how you need to make sure it goes back together and we did double check that the spring goes here at first thought maybe that uh, this white piece would go on here and try to press up here as much as possible and the spring would go on the bottom uh, to do that, uh, but we talked to the folks at Albers and found out that nope, the spring really does indeed go here, uh, just like that. One thing to note as you're putting these bolts back together and that diaphragm, which is you know sandwiched in between uh, these two pieces here, is that we need to make sure that this uh, will move easily, relatively easily here. Um, let's see, here's one that is going to be key because that basically moves the jet up and down in there. And on this side, for some reason, it's not quite as easy to move. You can see it kind of kind of hanging up there, but it is moving. 
And uh, regardless of the position and how I've tightened these things, it's still, uh, it's better than when I first put it together, which it kind of got stuck. Uh, but at this point, it uh, seems to be moving around. That's just one thing you got to be careful about is that it doesn't get somehow jammed uh, because that jet needs to be able to move up and down as you adjust the set screw there. And this is a view from the top. And when I move this lever here, uh, you can see the main jet moves down. So as I screw in this set screw, it pulls the main jet down, which richens the mixture. Now we're putting together the, uh, the top of the fuel bowl. And uh, this is the old filter, which was full of, on this one side was full of all kinds of sediment. And uh, here's the new one. So we're just gonna go ahead and put the new one in. And we've got two new ones. So they're actually gonna be uh, one on each side. So let's go actually like this. And we'll put that back together. We're gonna synchronize the uh, butterflies so that we know that they're both together. Uh, so the way you do that is that this one is uh, closed all the way and I've loosened this pinch bolt here uh, so I can actually move the butterfly. I don't know if you can see this rotation of that shaft just a little bit as I move the butterfly. So this is loose. We've backed this bolt off here so that is not a stop at this point. Um, so this is as far back as it can go with these springs. Um, but this is loose here. This butterfly is all the way on its stop and you can kind of feel that um, under here with your finger. Nothing's touching here. And at this point, then we tighten this pinch bolt down. And then the way uh, we adjust this is we bring it right up to touching here. We back it off. Um, so that you can get a 2,000th feeler gauge in there. Uh, and then once you do that, you screw this stop screw in one and a half turns, and then that sets the, the stop so that the butterflies aren't contacting the, uh, the internal uh, bore of the carburetors when they close. Now we're ready to set the gap here. So this is a piece of 2,000th brass shim stack that we were going to try to use on the distributor but didn't. So I've got that set so two thousandths uh, will just pass between the screw and the stop. And so at this point it says we turn one half of a turn in. So that one half of a turn is gonna be to here. And just to be sure that doesn't fit in now. It shouldn't, but yeah. And now that is set, we're just gonna tighten up the, the lock nut there. And this is our makeshift gasket that uh, we found that there was a little bit of teetering between here and the manifold, it's just a tiny bit. And so to try to take up that slack and make sure it was sealing, we got this fairly thick gasket material and used this to uh, create a gasket here. Okay, so it's back together and running much, much better. It's not warmed up yet, but you can hear it's not stumbling like it was before. Now that the engine is running pretty well, our next steps remain that distributor rebuild, as well as some final mixture and idle speed adjustments. So stay tuned for a future episode to see how that goes. Thanks for watching.